What's up guys, it's Gimzer and welcome back to Pro Samuel 2022 for episode number 74 of the Cannondale Drop Pack career mode. If you've missed the previous episode, uh, I would recommend going ahead and checking it out as it was the first episode of the new season um, and we had quite the successful outing in the Himalayas. In today's episode, we're going to start with the Colombian National Championships, then we'll head to South Africa for their first ever World Tour race. And then we'll most likely have the Omlop and Stradebianca to wrap up a short episode uh, before moving on to Paranis and Tirreno in the next one. We start off the episode in Colombia for the uh, national championships. It's a plus one for uh, Mr. Hermes Miranda. We'll send him in the breakaway. Um, whether he'll win is a different story. He hasn't progressed at all, uh, or at least very, very little. For uh, someone who had very good potential, I, I can't lie, I'm a tad disappointed. This could be uh, the final season of uh, Mr. Miranda. It is the final season of this save, to be fair. But I'm not sure he's going to get a new contract uh, unless he maybe wins today and starts to become good. All sadly for us, Mr. Miranda did not make the breakaway. Uh, and, and then the, the peloton became dumb. Um, they, they, a few, like a few riders have attacked uh, and they stopped racing. I was expecting Bernard to do something because he's the world champion. Uh, but every time I was to attack with Miranda, the peloton would just close me down. I'll attack now, but it's way too late, 28 kilometers until the end. The win is in this group of 10 ahead, and we've got sprinters and climbers. Should be quite interesting. It looks like Juan Sebastian Molano is in prime position. To take the win, he's gonna get co-op though. Sergio Iguita, Sergio Iguita, Santiago Umba. Sergio Iguita is the new Colombian champion. Oh, I've, I've jinxed him, haven't I? Yep, it's a win for Santiago Umba today, ahead of Sergio Iguita. And uh, Yeri Pira, top three of pure climbers, fair enough. Uh, Miranda is, uh, well, I'd, I'd say light years behind, but I don't, I don't think light years are as big a gap. Right, I must um, say something. We are not in South Africa. It turns out the race doesn't work. Uh, so we're in the UA Tour, and it's a custom version of the UA Tour. Uh, so it should be interesting nonetheless, um, disappointing. Uh, that the uh, Bafana, Bafana tour won't be here. I was uh, just eager to have Vuvuzelas throughout the entire fucking race. Sadly, it's minus two for the uh, champion of Luxembourg. Um, Diego Dickhelm, who was leading for us until uh, the two Australians decided to show off Nathan Craig and Ron Dennis. So we won't win today. Um, taking a look at the start list very quickly. We've got Tadej Pogacar, who has not DNF'd so far. Uh, he just DNF'd Lille Bastogne Liège. Out oh, 10 minutes ago, and uh, Jonas Vingegaard. Hopefully, Jonas won't lose too much time, and we can have some nice fights in uh, the coming stages of this UA Tour. Across the line for Jonas, out of energy, and it is 42 seconds lost on the lead. Fucking hell. Vingegaard loses also 42 seconds. That is gonna do better than us. Um, probably about 25 30, 22 seconds. Okay, we're already 20 seconds down on the Slovenian King. We've got some sprints today between Abu Dhabi and Abu Dhabi. I promise this is a custom race, right? It's not just your usual UAE tour, but there's not many races or many uh, stages you can do if you're not going to Abu Dhabi and or Dubai. Um, Sprinting-wise, I've, I've got Craig Scott, 74, made that 76 today with it, um, his fitness. And I 74 as well for Pierre-André Coté. Does that mean I'm going to finish at least P9? Possibly. We are in the uh, final kilometers of the stage and now we have Diego Dithelm leaving uh, the uh, pack here with Jackson Fletcher and the wheel. We're going to accelerate right now with the uh, Aussie rider Pierre Côté following, then Craig Scott, then Jonas Kria. We are going for the Brit, obviously. There goes Pierre-André Côté, do not destroy Craig, do not destroy Craig. I had said P9, maybe I've been a bit presumptuous, although... If we, that's actually probably P7, P8 for Cote and Scott. P5 and P7. I'll take that. Right, yes, yeah, some more sprints. I promise it's the last time. After that, we've got mountains. Then I think hills. Then sprint again. And then a ridiculous mountain stage, which is the exact reason as to why I decided to pick this variant and not just simulate the UA2 as I normally would have had there been nothing to play for. And on 8 kilometers between, uh, or oh, until Alain, we are entering um, the mountainous region of uh, the United Arab Emirates with um, the Jebel Hafid right next to, uh, to the town of Alain. And uh, we're, we're going for a sprint today. 
Once again, Craig Scott is our designated sprinter. He's in the middle of Pierre Côté, and then Jackson Fletcher, Mason, 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 Mason. Do not block anyone. Muchas gracias. Let's go 99 with Aaron Lissano. There's no roundabout in this finish, meaning that uh, it's a pure straight line. That's why I've got Jackson Fletcher. That's that's a lie. Just Jackson Fletcher should not have been here, but um, he's, he's there either way. 1.5 kilometers. There goes Pierre-André Côté. He's being blocked by Jackson Fletcher. And then Jackson Fletcher blocked Craig Scott. That's a uh, that's, that's very great performance uh, by Jackson Fletcher. He truly should not have been here. It's a will for the greatest sprinters or sprinter, sorry, that France has ever seen. It's Paul Penouet with the win. Finally, the mountains are promised are upon us. Uh, it's flat until Jebel Hafid today. It's a plus one for Mr. Jonas Kria. Uh, teammate wise, we're gonna have Jackson Fletcher with a plus five, and that's it. That's it. That's it's good. Jonas Kira doesn't need anyone. He just needs his legs, and usually they do the talking. We're gonna start Jebel Hafid. For some reason, Jonas doesn't have his full energy compared to the likes of an Aaron Nitsano. Uh, or basically anyone else in the team, like Jackson Fletcher. So I'm a bit worried um, and a bit skeptical, should I say. Meanwhile, up front, riders have attacked. Uh, we've got Jorgensen, Lucro, and Thibaut Gernalek. Ron Dennis is trying to come back at them. I'm not sure whether they'll uh, be here to win. I don't think they will. But let's make sure that uh, that they don't. Jonas Kreer is um, paying attention to what Tade is going to do. Got Varvlosen on the left, Tiberi as well attacking. <sighs> right, 8 kilometers. It's a climb I know, it's a climb I like. I'm confident. I'm Not still 223 for the breakaway. There's a very strong chance that uh, Thibaut Gernalek wins at Jebel Hafez ahead of Rondonis, who could move into the uh, leader's jersey of this race. Meanwhile, Fletcher and Kria are pacing at the front of the peloton um, just to try and either manage the gap or come back at the uh, French water, but so far uh, this job is being uh, ineffective. 3k to go, today well positioned, so Spare Pants is guard, so David Godu, and so is Jonas Kria. Acceleration by Liquigat here through uh, Corsi. 81 Mountain, that's very good stats by, uh, by Corsi, I did not know the lad, uh, and he's, he seems quite good. today is gonna drop every one of us by uh, going for the sprint here. Jonas Kreer was blocked by uh, Jackson Fletcher, it's a win for Gamalek, as I had mentioned. Tadej comes home in P2, but Hugh Carthy and Jonas Kreer are here and they haven't given up yet. Alright, we've got a hilly stage ahead of us. Um, it's a plus one for Jonas Kreer, it's a plus two for Fletcher, plus three for Mason, right? Plus five for Pierre-André Côté, uh, that's a good, it's technically a stage that I think I'm gonna hate. Um, Especially this this climb here and the the first one like the uh, far far trail and the uh, Al Mutaka tunnel or tunnel sorry I'm gonna hate it because the peloton is gonna go ninety nine in it and there's a very strong chance that because there's a slight drop here uh, that I'm gonna get dropped here and then I won't come back so I need the strongest team uh, available to uh, avoid the drop. It's quite interesting, uh, we're gonna start the climb as I said um, that I fear, the uh, Al Multaka tunnel. 62 riders in the first group and then another group of 34 behind with Pierre-André Côté and Jackson Fletcher. Oh, I'm gonna get dropped here. Yeah. I nearly got dropped on this false flat, that's ridiculous. Uh, but I only have Jonas Kriar and Mason Ray at the front uh, because everyone got dropped, as I said, um, in Far Far Trail. And they never came back, isn't that lovely? I think it is. This is ridiculous, we're going on uh, slopes of more than 22%, make that 23. Okay, we're gonna stop at 22.8, but this is ridiculous. We're gonna struggle, but we're gonna cross the summit with everyone. It's a group of 23 riders. We have two guys ahead, Michael Frey Honore and Andreas Kron. It's a good day uh, to be a Dane. But Jonas has no teammates and, uh, well, that could prove to be quite costly in the uh, finish of this stage. And here we are then, climbing Al Suhub. 5 kilometers at an average gradient of 10% and a max of 18. We need to be well positioned and not be blocked here by uh, the riders of Kubeka V3. I mean, I don't think I've got the pace right now to even be blocked. I'm just going to block people by, the, by the, the looks of it. Attacks immediately with uh, Aurélien Parépeintre, Pavel Sivakov, Buitrago, Tiberi, Vlasov, Johannes and Tadej, Ron Dennis. Everyone is there except Jonas Kreer. 
who's slightly behind. It's definitely not a climb that should suit me. Uh, although I've got 80, well, 80 hills, 82 mountain. Okay, it's a climb that should suit me. We'll see whether we can come back. Uh, it's a very similar finish to something like La Porte de Belfi. And we've seen last year on the World Championships that it wasn't a finish that I, I uh, particularly did well on. I'm going to make sure that I don't get dropped here on this little um, flat-ish portion. Coming back on a Pavel Sivakov, we'll use the gel, but right now I'm using way too much red for my liking. It's a very difficult climb. I don't think I'll have a, a chance to win today. Pretty sure I'm actually going to lose time on a, a climb such as this one. This is where you need a teammate. Tadej Pogacar able to attack. This is ridiculous. The Slovenian in a world of his own. Jonas Vingegaard. Jesus. Coming through. And he's going to take the stage in Al Suhub ahead of Alexander Vlasov and Tadej Pogacar. Jonas Kreer is going to come home uh, in the top 10. Hopefully no time lost on the Dane. Should be fine. All right, well, this promises a huge thing with uh, the final mountain stage in two days. Penultimate stage of this UAE Tour. Uh, there were some gaps yesterday, meaning that we now sit 44 seconds behind Tadej Pogacar in the lead of this UAE Tour. Uh, with one more mountain stage, things could still definitely change in uh, tomorrow's events. Uh, today, the aim is just to finish in the pack and maybe have a good sprint with Pierre-André Côté. I just wished the peloton had uh, opened up the road here on the right-hand side. Uh, I guess not. So we'll try and move everyone to uh, to the left, to the left, in the words of uh, of uh, Queen Bee. Is it? Well, I, I hope it's uh, to the left. Uh, yeah, yeah, I'm pretty sure it's uh. uh either way, I digress. Um, let's uh, end this musical interlude and start the sprint then. Oh, Ferrari, fucking grazie ragazzi, grande macchina. Why? Why do you have a, a, a pleasure of always, always being in my way? I'm not sure. It's not going to be a win for us today. It's a win for Arnaud de Lee. Can you hold on to Mats Mikkels? Yes, he can. But it's P4 for Quick Score and P5 for Pierre André Coté. A very welcome top 5 for uh, Calendal Garmin. And it'll be a plus one to wrap up this UA Tour for Jonas Kria. This is the stage. This is the one stage that could change everything. We have the Jebel Jace, uh, which is a climb that uh, everyone knows and loves. And then we'll have the um, Wadi Sal, the Bakal Caves, and we'll finish at the uh, Jebel Yibir, 6.4 kilometers, average of 14.5% and a max of 21. This is simply going to be ridiculous. There's going to be gaps and hopefully enough so that Jonas Kreer can at least come back on the podium. Um, I'm expecting to overtake Vlasov. I think Tadej and Jonas are out of the of the picture. So yeah, the aim is to defeat the rider who uh, rides without a country. We're gonna start the uh, Wadi Sal. This could be also a difficult climb. Uh, 4.5 kilometers at an average of 15%. Positioning is key and that's why I'm already dropping. Thank you, Jonas. Also, I mean, Scuderia Ferrari have had the greatest of time so far in this race to just block me. On 20 kilometers, some riders have decided to uh, jump the gun. That is the case of uh, David Goodwin and Zander Sverlösem, who have attacked to try and bridge to um, Anders Haaland Jonasson. I've called him Asbjorn, I think, the entire last season. And I'd like to apologize for that. Um, meanwhile, in the peloton, we are letting Liquigas do everything. Jonas doesn't have a teammate anymore. Mason Ray was dropped um, through positioning and uh, also just, just lack of legs. Timo Ball is trying to come back here. Um, Mm -mm. I'm not really sure what I should do. It's a very tricky race. Every road is narrow, and when I mean narrow, I mean like they, you could not fit two smart four twos on that road. And um, yeah, I'm I'm worried that uh, the um, Jebel Ibir will suffer the same exact uh, scenario. So I need to be very careful, very well positioned, whilst not losing too much energy. It's a struggle. 7.4 kilometers. Some riders came back. That's the case of Mason Ray, who managed to um, bring himself back to the front of this group. Timo Brest is at the front, trying to chase down Mr. Johannesson, uh, who is virtually leading this uh, UAE tour, or at least was until like one kilometer ago. Uh, 5.8 kilometers, average of 14% as Jonas Vingegaard attacks from the very beginning. Tadej Pogacar follows. And uh, that's, that's it. Jonas Kreer is behind. Not following, um, because I do not wish to die. 
Jonas has attacked for about 500 meters at this steepness. He's built different. Tade managed to counter attack. Um, I think we're gonna set to 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 get P3. I don't think I'll be uh, able to uh, to finish any higher. Where's Vlasov? Well, I'm I'm not seeing him. So is, is that him? No, that's Godu. Where is Alexander Vlasov? Is that him? Where? Why is he there? Okay, well, uh, I'll take P3 of this GZ. Um, the climb was just too difficult for me today. Tade wins atop Jebel Yiber uh, in what has been one of the most difficult climbs I've uh, had to do on PCM. Jonas Vingerhard comes up in second and will take P2 of the GC. Meanwhile, Jonas Kria will take P3 of the stage and P3 of the GC. Final stage of this episode, the uh, Strade Bianche, I usually have them at the, the beginning of the uh, Paris slash Tirano episode, but I figured you didn't have much content for today, and uh, maybe not enough wins, because I'm, I'm pretty sure so far I haven't won the episode. Um, the Strade Bianche is usually a race where I do well, uh, however, it's a race where I usually finish second, third, and fourth, but rarely first. Let's hope that uh, we can end this curse by uh, getting a win. I've got a very strong lineup today. Alberto Betiol, Matej Jorgensen, Jonas, Jonas Kreese again. He was meant to be uh, to, to have a break here. I'm sorry, lad. Uh, Stefan Kung, Magnus Sheffield, Ethan Ata. Got a great lineup, but I'll probably lose. Because Van Aert is there. We're in the final 20 kilometers of this race. Uh, Van Aert has attacked again with Jasper Stoyven. Well, not with Stoyven anymore. Uh, I think it's attack number three or four for Wout, and this time it's a big one. Uh, the previous attack was with a certain Julien Lafilippe, who's not that bad a rider. So uh, I was a bit worried, hence why uh, I started pacing with uh, with Stefan Kung. We'll see what uh, Mr. Wout can do. I faced him once this year. It was on the Tour de la Provence, and he won the entire thing, finishing second on the Mont uh behind Alexandre Balmer. It's a race you hadn't seen. Um, but I've beaten him once, surely I can beat him again. And we're gonna come back on uh, the European champion. Sadly, there is a distinct lack of water. Actually, Magnus, please get water, lad. Um, seven riders, four of them, five of them are from uh, my team. Although Stefan King is not good. Uh, Alain Philippe, Van Bosch, well done to the lad, I do not know who he is. Still Von Art, uh resisting at the front. I think I've got what it takes to win today. But I cannot afford it to make a single mistake as Jonas Kreer is pacing 90, trying to chase down the European champion. We're gonna try something. We're gonna try an attack with uh, Alberto Betiol to force Alaphilippe to pace. Well, they haven't. Well done. Alberto Betiol has won the uh, Strade Bianca. I had by far the best lineup. It would be uh, logic, all of us, that uh, we take the win today. I'll use the gel here. Jonas Kreer, um, nothing to worry about. He's gonna come home. In a, what probably will be a comfortable top 7. Jorgensen is gonna lead in the Via San Caterina. There goes Matt Jorgensen. Magnus Sheffield in the wheel. I think Von Art is gonna be able to uh, keep P2. But the win is Italian. It's for one of the only rider above 30 that I have ever signed in this save. Alberto Vitzel takes the stage at the Piazza del Campo ahead of Magnus Sheffield and Matt Jorgensen. It's a 1 2 3 for Candel Garmin. And we're gonna wrap up the episode as the sun has decided to grace my window and that's why I'm absolutely oversaturated. Uh, the last time I had ended the episode, we had only one on uh, the tour of the summit, four stages in the GC. Since then, um, many things have happened. I've played a bit um, solo, so we've won San Juan, we've won two of the trophies in Spain, we've won three stages and the GC in Saudi Tour, we've won a stage at the Tour de la Provence, We've won the Classica Rhein Paraiso Interior, we've won two stages in the GC in Algarve, we've won a stage in the GC in Gran Camino, we've won Drum Classic, and you've just seen the win at the Strade Bianca. So far, so good for Calendel Dropak. In the next episode, we shall uh, tackle the Paranis and Tirreno. This time uh, it's actually Tirreno and Paranis, no funny business. And uh, then we'll head to San Remo for the end of the episode. So it should be quite packed, quite full of energy, and hopefully, full of wins. Nevertheless, I hope you've enjoyed today's episode. If you have, then please leave a like down below. If you're new to the channel and want to see more of this content going forward, then um, just follow the channel in it. Just click subscribe. It's it's uh, the big red button beyond the, the, the video. And I'll see you in the very, very near future. My name is Guillaume. Have uh, the most amazing of days. See ya. Pass me the